Welcome to the broadcast, everybody. Here is the order of service today. Some Harkle business, then I'm going to have a go at a viewer, and then royalty. Okay, so you can skip ahead if you wish to, but we will have to begin with the Harkles, because it's very curious. This business surrounding Ashley Hansen, who is their global head of communications and global press secretary, worked for them for over two years, and they all seem to be very happy with the, the arrangement. She is a rare keeper because everybody else jumps very quickly out of the frying pan, don't they? Away from the fire. They seem to be happy with the arrangement from the outside. However, now Ashley Hansen has set up her own communications firm, the Three Gate Strategy, which offers bespoke brand management to a range of clients in addition to the Sussexes. So she is taking on other clients at a time when surely the Harkles would want their global head of all these communications focused sharply and solely upon them. Well, Ashley Hansen is making other arrangements. American Riviera Orchard is one of its first signings, this Three Gate Strategies new firm. So it is under that wing and the PR for American Riviera Orchard is all in Ashley Hansen's hands, as well as other creative projects of Megan's, creative with the truth. And of course, of course, with this new shift in focus comes a grand fanfare and the Harkle Bugler has gainful employment this week. They've been fanfaring this ostensibly private arrangement. Why do we need a vulgar display? So vulgar. What is it with Oscar acceptance speeches every time they wipe their asses? Megan says, my husband and I are excited. They're always excited, aren't they? In these uh, humble bragging social media posts. So excited to announce, so excited to say. Is that really what excites you? Oh, how sad. My husband and I are excited to be alongside Ashley as she builds something extraordinarily special with her firm. We are so proud of Ashley. You're not our parents. We're so proud of Ashley, especially as a female entrepreneur. Oh, they had to put it, that in there, didn't they? They had to put in that little sexist note. They claim to be the anti-sexists. They are sexist. Oh, she's a female entrepreneur, as if in 2024 she's the first one on the planet. Zutalor. We look forward to having her focused expertise on our business and creative projects and her continued oversight of our communications team. Word salad. And Ashley Hansen says, I'm incredibly grateful to the Duke and Duchess for their continued trust in me. Their unwavering support and belief in my new firm has been meaningful and is a testament to their leadership. I knew when they first hired me that they were giving me the opportunity of a lifetime and I couldn't be happier to continue working together. Schmaltz, schmaltz, schmaltz from Ashley Hansen. Megan has also added the Three Gate Strategies firm to her investment portfolio. Oh, she's such a savvy executive. When she was taken ill, this Ashley Hansen, she says that she was inundated with care packages and flowers from the Sussexes and she, she said, that she was met with the concern and care that a parent would express as if it were their own child. Most profoundly to me, she said, Megan would personally reach out to my husband daily and make sure we were both okay and had support. Would you want Megan Sussex reaching out to your husband every day? That's the quiz. She'll start bringing him roast chicken soon. And the name of this new firm, Three Gate Strategy, derives from the Persian poet Rumi, who said, before you speak, let your words pass through these gates. Is it true? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Well, the Harkles evidently dodged that one, didn't they? And they dodged a bit of Rumi and gave Rumi a bit of a wide berth. They missed those three gates and they snuck around the back entrance. Mariana Trench left a comment, which really tickled me, actually. I loved it because she said 
that Megan should call her forthcoming book Spite. <laughs> I don't know if that's been said before, but wouldn't that be a delicious name for a sequel to Spare? Spare and Spite. And actually, I love it. I think it's very high camp. And if I was to go on and release my memoir, I think that's exactly what I would call it. I would claim it, my dear. Spite by River. <laughs> I love it. And speaking of the Spare, he's been wrapped on the knuckles this week by Mr Justice Fancourt. Yes, wrapped on the knuckles, those knuckles he keeps dragging around after him. He has been formally warned that his phone hacking case against the publisher of The Sun is consuming too much time. Everybody's exasperated, to be quite honest with you. In a preliminary ruling, Fancourt had harsh words for both legal teams, actually, the Dukes and MGM. He said that the disputes that are ongoing between them resembled a campaign between two obdurate but well-resourced armies. And I'll confess to you, I didn't know what obdurate meant, so I looked it up. Obdurate, stubbornly persistent in wrongdoing, stubbornly refusing to change one's opinion or cause of action, refusing to do what other people want. Sums up Harry, doesn't it? What a fabulous word, obdurate. I always thought of him as obstinate and pugnacious, but we've got another one. Sums up Harry. So thank you, Mr Justice Fancourt, for furnishing my vocabulary with another word. Obdurate boy. Obdurate. Stubborn. Stubborn as an ox. Justice Fancourt wrote that the case is starting to absorb more than an appropriate share of the court's resources. And this claim is due to be either trialled or settled in January. So the stakes are very high at this moment in time. A game of nerves. Harry, as part of a 12-page judgment, has been refused permission to continue allegations of planting bugs in rooms and residences and bugs or tracking devices on cars because no particulars whatsoever of such allegations have been provided. So why did he make the allegations in the first place? That's the quiz. One specific allegation that Harry made in relation to Chelsea Davies' car has been withdrawn entirely. Isn't it curious? He needs to revise his roomie. Don't you, Has? You need to be reading up on the roomie like Ashley Hanson. Is it true? Is it necessary? And is it kind? Or is it hogwash, Harry? Is it hogwash and a barrel of bollocks? Now, I'm about to dress down a viewer, and I don't need anybody telling me that I don't need to address these comments. I enjoy doing it, I want to do it, and it's part of the show. So nobody has to chip in with that sort of thing. Thank you very much. I want to respond. Uh, uh, just like Kate W. had to respond when I specifically asked people, rather politely. Actually, no, I, I didn't ask politely, did I? I demanded that uh, people fuck off if they wanted to complain about me poking a little fun at President Biden, as I did in the previous broadcast. You can go back and watch it if you didn't see it. Congratulations are in order for a President of the United States. Here he is, here he is. Mr. Biden, Mr. Biden, oh Joe. Oh, my apologies, my dear, it's, uh, it's Jimmy Carter. <laughs> but it was a little comedy moment. Uh, that made most of you chuckle and receive it, no matter your party persuasion, as you wanted to. I'm sure I'll get one or two comments spring up from people who are offended by what I just said. Save yourself before you announce and flounce. But Kate W couldn't resist, so she's going to get it before anyone complains. She's going to get it because she asked for it. River and Kate W you can receive my response in the spirit of this broadcast which is playfully catty, but doesn't pull any punches. River, I am saddened that you would insult my president by insinuating that he is in that condition to belittle him for a laugh. In fact, President Biden is in the southeastern US right now working very hard to help deal with the death and devastation through several states wrought by the recent destructive hurricane Helene. And on a serious moment for a second, I do hope that everybody out there is safe and well. Awful what's happened. But that aside, I wouldn't think of paying such a joke on the leaders of your country to make fun of them. I'm 75, River, and I've been a basketeer for ages. Or a basketeer. For ages. 
and always enjoy the broadcast. So your direction not to speak with you on this issue stings. We all need to be open to hearing the results of the energies we send out, n'est-ce pas? Otherwise, we risk becoming petty dictators rather than persons, I think you mean people, than persons who can grow. Well, first and foremost, and with all due respect, I appreciate the fact that you've been watching the broadcast for a long time, and it seems that you've enjoyed most of it, but you are not a basketeer. Simply subscribing to the channel and watching does not a basketeer make. You are not a basketeer. A basketeer is the likes of Junie Moon, who said, I voted for Biden and found it very funny. And that was one of many similar comments, my dear. That's a basketeer. You know, now, that takes her off with the smooth and can be fruity and ain't, and ain't too pure to be picked. I would insult, as you put it, which is actually just poking fun, I would insult any president, alive, dead, left, right, Democrat, Republican, same in this country, with our cavalcade of messed up politicians from all sides of the lollipop. Any of them! And I would never denude you of the right to poke fun at Catherine or the King or Camilla or whoever I vote for. Well, uh, to put that in context, I might dress you down or delete comments disparaging my Queen Camilla, for example, but I wouldn't denude you of the right to speak on your platform as you wish and try to police your language or silence you. Do you understand? That's the difference. This is my playground. I didn't invite you here. You came to me to watch. So you allow me to hold forth as I wish to. Do you understand? Maybe now you do. Uh, so if I'm a petty dictator, then so are you, my dear. So are you. And if you've been watching for so long and somehow you've completely missed the elements of the comedy roast that forms a vast majority of this channel, the comedy roast in the style of Joni Rivers, uh, the drag humour, the elements of drag humour that I bring into it, and nothing being off limits within the remit of the guidelines of YouTube's rules and regulations, you understand. I held the late Queen Elizabeth in the highest regard, as you all know the highest regard possible, but I still pointed out the fact that during her last Christmas message, her bosom was hanging down on her desk. And, you know, some might not like that, and I get it, it might not be to their taste. Well, that's their decision, but there should be a place and places for irreverence. And quite frankly, Kate W, I would never associate with the likes of you, because you are sanctimonious and impudent and joyless and rather humorless. And I'm sure you've got many redeeming features, my dear, but you decided that you had to uh, deliver your little tuppence worth of outrage into my comment section when I especially told you not to. That was your right. I cannot prevent you from doing so, but I will respond in kind. I will respond in kind. I have no desire to dictate how you feel, my dear, but I will, I will dictate. I will dictate who is welcome in my playground and who is not. And that's the final word. Get it? Got it? Good. So, Kate W. I wish you very well. I wish you blessings and healing. I really do. In all seriousness. But... Don't fuck with me. Queen Camilla the First visited the site of the new King Charles the Third sacristy building at Westminster Abbey, which will welcome visitors and serve as a gathering place on state occasions. Her Majesty is patron of this new project, which is being built on the site of the original medieval great sacristy constructed in the 1250s, which was used by monks to store sacred items and to form processions, playing a key role in Abbey life. She wore her scallop suit by Brucie Oldfield with Chanel Pumpies, and the beguiling stone is her diamond and moonstone brooch. Exquisite. For the Prince of Wales, it was time to faire de l'unitation. And I don't mean to pour warm water on the subject of swimming pools, which we're about to discuss. I love swimming pools, and I love swimming, but I went off the idea of them when I learned how much urine is found in public pools and baths. 
I urge you not to Google it, my dear, or you will never want to dip a toe into a public bathing pool again. And I don't care if the chlorine kills it off, so they say. Yerdin's Yerdin. And I don't go swimming in other people's urine, my dear, <laughs> no. Um, and the ocean and our lakes, and sad to say, our rivers, aren't much better these days, are they? But putting that to one side, the Royal Foundation has proudly supported Berkeley Community Pool from funding, uh, with funding, that should read, to meet refurbishment costs of lessons for primary aged children. This brilliant facility will have long-term benefits for the community in the weeks, months and years to come. 16,000 people are going to benefit from support and encouragement to dip a toe into swimming activities every month. But don't pee on my leg and blame the jacuzzi. Prince William revealed that all of his family are very keen swimmers. They enjoy it very much, with Prince George in particular. Loving scuba diving. This is what he's into these days. He loves scuba diving, which shows that he is off on a good start to be a brave and fearless king. A brave and fearless king in the making, my dear. A lionheart, King George the Seventh. He made acquaintance with the locals of all generations, the peasants and paupers of this part of his future kingdom. And Princess Beatrice, formerly of York, joined an array of celebrities celebrating 10 years of the Chiltern Firehouse. And pregnancy will not stop the party for our princess, who was in sleek black velvet and slacks, continuing her streak as Tatler's most stylish in this Zara blazer with a bow belt, handbag that Aspinall Mayfair embroidered in beaded birds. And there were a galaxy of celebrities rocking up for the event. I rather enjoyed Sienna's gauzy sequined look, even with the laddered nylons on display. I rather enjoyed that. She looked good. But then there was the likes of Ellie Goulding. It's not Halloween yet, love. And put your pumpkins away. Tuck yourself in and get cosy and say hi to Duchess Sup High, who will be seen on CBeebies reading a bedtime story next Thursday to mark World Sight Day. She's going to be reading Specs for Rex by Yasmin Ismail, a wonderful story to encourage children to embrace being different, which seems to be the theme of every fucking book these days, doesn't it, my dear? Specs for Rex. Could she be talking about Charles Rex? Possibly. Love the cashmere, Sophie. And Sophie continues to blossom like spring in her autumn season, doesn't she? The cashmere was actually by Lukasha, the Shepra cashmere in peach and she was peachy keen. She was also spied in a cream peasant tunic when Her Royal Highness presented bursaries to nursing students at the University of Greenwich. She was glimpsed arriving for the 10th anniversary of the People's Dispensary for Sick Animals Order of Merit. She was in Wiltshire in khaki for the Duchess of Edinburgh competition held by the Corps of the Royal Electoral and Mechanical Engineers and she became Royal Patron of Girl Guides following in the footsteps of the late Queen Elizabeth, who took on the role in 1953. And I'm sure the late Queen would be absolutely thrilled to see her beloved daughter-in-law following in her footsteps. She would be thrilled. Prince Edward was welcomed to Crawford's Bin Scout Centre, speaking with groups from across Ireland who were taking part in the Duke of Edinburgh scheme. And as if that weren't enough, she was later in Bulford for a homecoming parade for five rifles at Picton Barracks, she presented mini rifles, and I'm not sure how PC that is, mini rifles for the children, there we go, rifles and medals to the bands of those who had been away on operation, and the gown was quite charming, I've got to tell you, Erdem floral jacquard, with a clutch in fuchsia satin, and the regimental brooch of the 5th Battalion of the Rifles. And to mark the 30th anniversary of Poetry Day, the poet laureate Simon Armitage has written an original poem based on this year's theme of counting. The poem is a haiku, a Japanese type of short form poetry which involves counting as it has a strict five syllable, seven syllable, five syllable structure. Maths. Smash your abacus. Hurl it into the night sky. Uncountable stars. 
A fruit basket without basketeers is indeed like a night without stars. So I thank all of you so very much for glittering in my fruity firmament. I look forward to seeing you next time, my dear. Leave me a juicy comment if you wish to. Not an impudent one. Just juicy and fruity. And feel free to send me a little tip for Sunday service in my tip jar in the description box. Oh, it's not Sunday, is it? It's Saturday. <laughs> oh, dear. See you next time, my dears. <laughs> Ta-ra and toodle-pip. Lots of love.